Um, <clears throat> let's start. Uh, so um, we are on. with the greatest pleasure, actually, I welcome Dr. Jelko Ivankovic um, to talk about cryptocurrency and uh, the challenge provided uh, by the cryptocurrency. Um, I just want to introduce a bit our speaker tonight. And um, Jelko uh, was the chief editor of Banca for more than 15 years, the most important magazine um, in Croatia for the uh, banking and financial sector, a research director of the uh, banking association in Croatia, has been lecturing at the Vern University in Zagreb, economic counselor at the embassy um, in Canberra, for, for Croatia, obviously in Canberra, and in uh, Tokyo, if I'm not wrong, in Tokyo as well, um, yeah. economic counselor. He wrote um, two important books. Uh, the first one of them actually is um, following in some sense, an expression that was introduced in the economic jargon by Paul Krugman. Um, uh, the first book uh, was about privatization and crony capitalism uh, by showing basically how Paul Krugman argument that was the expression was trying to capture a certain type of socioeconomic phenomenon that was happening in Far East Asia uh, was actually kind of traceable in um, in Europe and in particular in former socialist countries. And the same type of argument that Krugman applied after the financial crisis in 97 actually could be reasonably um, kind of traced back here in former socialist countries, uh, such as for example, Croatia in his book actually talks extensively about some of the cases and use Croatia as a case study if you want and uh, talk about the collapse of the largest Croatian conglomerate the agrocore, uh, and then illustrates in some sense the development of chronic capitalism in Croatia and the relationship with the privatization process taking place in Croatia after uh, the fall of the uh, socialist regimes. Um, the chronic capitalism, as kind of probably is well known, is a sort of type of economic system in which businesses thrive not as a result of the risk, but rather as a sort of uh, an accumulation and a master amount of money that is generated through, let's say, the coexistence, or if you want to use a more sophisticated word, the nexus between a political establishment and certain type of business environments and so on. The second book actually leads more to the discussion of tonight, um, because, um, sorry for my Czech present, uh, sorry for my Croatian, pronunciation, uh, Besplatno, uh, free of charge, translating to a free of charge. Um, and actually, um, I've been reading some of the reviews and it's considered to be actually one of the, um, the first and the most important academic book, book written at that time. Um, uh, an unavoidable, uh, the reviewer says, an unavoidable academic source for many scholars. Uh, in this book, actually, um, Jaco, Jaco is actually talking about the dilemmas presented by the digital age, the digital economy, and uh, what are the, in some sense, the political uh, economical perspective and what we can expect, in some sense, um, from the development of the economy. This leads, in some sense, to the discussion of tonight, where actually Jaco, I think, is in preparation a third book, right, about um, that's what kind of we were talking about the third book, talking about digital currency, um, cryptocurrency, and so on. Um, Angelco came to us to present some of the research he did in the last years uh, about the cryptocurrency and the challenge they pose from a regulation point of view, and uh, what, to what extent is legitimate to talk about just the code of law, or there are more actually elements at place starting from the concept of responsibility itself. Uh, I don't wanna take too much time to our speaker tonight. And um, I let you the, well, digital floor. I would say the floor in the college, but I, I let you the digital floor, Jalko. And um, welcome, <laughs> welcome to the School of Business. Thank you. Thank you, for, thank you for giving us the possibility to hear about um, your research and your findings. Thank you so much. Thank you, Stefano. 
Am I on now? You can see me and probably, uh, I hope you can see my presentation as well. Yes, we can. Now. On your screen, okay. Thank you, Stefano. Uh, I'm really pleased uh, for the opportunity to present my uh, to you and to your students and uh, other in the audience, uh, uh, my recent research interest, yes. The lecture uh, and uh, my book, you mentioned my book, I hope I will write that book, is uh, a conceptual uh, history of money somehow. And, and I start from the end, from uh, cryptocurrencies. And uh, this is my presentation about my uh, latest piece. Uh, I will uh, briefly introduce, uh, I, I will add something to your introduction. Uh, thank you for your introduction. Uh, this is my book, Best Platinum, free of charge. Yes, this is, uh, and uh, I wasn't actually uh, the director of Croatian Banking Association, but I was director of uh, the research of Croatian Banking Association for two years. So just mm -hmm. if anybody's from Croatia, I listen to so <laughs> only to be correct. So uh, uh, my PhD, uh, I'm a political philosopher. Uh, mostly interested in, in economics and finance, and my PhD at the Australian uh, uh, National University was in political economy. Uh, for the past few years, I am writing mostly about cryptocurrencies and about the digital age, and this is my, my book. Well, um, uh, this is outline of, uh, the outline of my presentation for today. Uh, I will first describe uh, very recent developments in the world of cryptocurrencies. And then I will provide a general introduction, some basic concepts. After that, I will briefly explain what is basic idea and what, we are, uh, what are basic principles of the cryptocurrencies. A comparison uh, to bank money follows then uh, between cryptocurrencies and uh, bank money. This is third part, third section. Then I will describe the development of the crypto world and I will try to show uh, there is some parallelism between the development of bank money and the development of crypto world. Uh, most important uh, elements of the development of crypto world are uh, scandals, from institutional perspective, because my perspective is institutional perspective, scandals, hacking, self-improvement, which is in fact self-regulation, in my opinion, and I will try to, to prove it. Uh, finally, uh, I think this would be enough, <laughs> but finally, I will explain what Satoshi Nakamoto, I hope people know who Satoshi Nakamoto was he was crea uh, the creator of uh, crypto cryptocurrencies uh, what did he get wrong in my opinion and for the discussion i propose the topic uh, uh, how the crypto world nevertheless survives so, well let's start with the recent developments a couple of weeks, uh, of weeks ago, at the end of November, I participated uh, in a conference, The Future of Fintech in Zagreb. And I took this slide from one of presentations. Uh, the guy who presented it said that, uh, that it looks like a meme, like a joke. But he said, it is not a joke at all. It is in fact reality. I believe uh, that, uh, if, that even among those interested in the subject, not many would understand clearly what this young man in the photo is saying. So uh, try to read it. Yeah, so you put your app into compound as collateral and then borrow USDT. Then you use Etherscan to lend some USDT back, to, uh, back so you can farm and so on and so on. So it is not easy even to read. Uh, let alone to understand, but it happens somehow. So it happens. 
this, re this relates to the uh, latest hype in the world of cryptocurrencies to decentralized finance. They call it DeFi. Well, at the conference, the main topics were decentralized finance and a new proposal of European Commission for the regulation of crypto markets. But people from decentralized finance to some degree oppose not only European regulation, but any regulation. They even believe that regulation of some, uh, some parts of decentralized, fi decentralized finance is not possible at all. At the time uh, of the conference, the total value of smart contracts, it is important that decentralized finance is based on smart contracts, in, uh, was about $15 billion. And today, uh, I think it is again almost $15 billion con uh, value of contract. So I look at it uh, maybe one hour ago, before one hour. And uh, probably, uh, so uh, I will explain a little bit smart contracts. Uh, smart contracts are those contracts that are out uh, automatically algorithmically ex executed in specific, if specific preconditions are fulfilled. So, according to some interpretations, the rise of money put in smart contracts on the platforms of decentralized finance is behind the recent bullish market in crypto. Today, Bitcoin is worth uh, more than $19,000 again. So. Well, there are proponents and opponents of this world of crypto money. If you read internet sites that promote the crypto world, or if you read their business documents, they are full of promotion, of technical and obscure jargon, which pretends to be only for a closed community, for, for specialists, uh, closed community of those who are already members of their almost holy circles. So uh, they, they uh, treat themselves as special people or who understand something very special. This jargon speaks about efficiency, success, productivity, and looks attractive to some people who are outside these circles. On the other side are, uh, side are critics. They can spot misleading informations, information, cheating, illusionary promises, criminal activities, Ponzi schemes, insider trading, price manipulation, money laundering, and so on. Well, it is true that uh, from its beginnings in 2008-2009 when uh, Satoshi Nakamoto published his uh, uh, paper, published his uh, seminal paper, the world of cryptocurrencies was full of scandals, even of confirmed criminal activities, and that a lot of money uh, was lost or stolen. Nevertheless, the less uh, the world of cryptocurrency still lives. There is some persistency in this world. It survived not only its own mistakes, but also attacks from high positions from the people of official finance. After the burst of uh, the ICO bubble, it was three years ago, at the end of uh, 17 and uh, uh, at the beginning of uh, 2018, uh, at that time, uh, Bitcoin was also worth uh, uh, almost $20,000. Uh, so something has changed. Attacks are weaker. Even some prominent officials change their position. For example, Christine Lagarde, uh, I, I'm sure you know, she served as the director of the IMF, International Mon Monetary Fund, Fund, and is now the governor uh, of the ECB. The European Central Bank, and she she has repeatedly encouraged bankers to experiment with the crypto technology, and they start to do it now. So, uh, I also uh, 
uh, like to stress that in the last 10 years, there has been an intense theoretical discussion and research of the crypto money world. Uh, a lot of papers are, uh, were published, uh, scientific papers. And I strongly, uh, I, I, I mention it here because I strongly, my presentation strongly relies on these papers and these books, this research. The focus of this presentation is on self-regulation, regulation and regulation. The idea of the presentation, uh, my idea, uh, I cannot review all 10 years, of course, because some of uh, you are very well informed and it would be boring for you and some are not, uh, not informed enough and uh, it, an introduction would be exhausting. So uh, my idea is uh, uh, to, uh, back to basics, back to uh, the paper Bitcoin, a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system, which is written by Satoshi Nakamoto. Nobody knows who Satoshi Nakamoto really was, but we have that paper and we can read it, all that uh, started with it. So uh, uh, my question is, uh, the idea is uh, an examination of the initial idea, idea and of the principles, the principles introduced into this paper. Have they been rejected, dismissed, or retained, transformed, or improved? So uh, I will already, I will already, to avoid any suspense, I will already jump to my conclusion. In my opinion, Satoshi Nakamoto could be at the same time satisfied and not, not satisfied with the development so far. He could be satisfied that his creation is still alive, taking into account attacks on it and internal technological problems and the problems on the market. On the other hand, uh, and uh, he can't be satisfied with the abandoning of his initial principle. However, for the conclusion, I will provide some preliminary arguments. Uh, according to Nakamoto, Bitcoin is a system of automatized transaction of electronic cash without a trusted third party that would verify or confirm transaction. So therefore Nakamoto's main goal was to create money without regula regulation. My question is, was it possible at all? In my opinion, it is impossible. My thesis is money, money is a social creation. If any artifact is to become money, it has to be accepted as money. Shells, we have in history, money as shells, sticks, paper notes, coins, and of course, bunch of uh, 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 cryptocurrencies or crypto coin or Bitcoin is in fact a bunch of data, stream of data. So it has to be accepted as money to become money. Uh, some people uh, understand my thesis as self-evident, uh, but I will not stop here. For example, people for, from Financial Times, prominent authors like Isabella Kaminska or uh, Jemima Kelly, they, if they discuss with the people from the crypto world, they usually tell them it is not only technology, Money must be uh, must be accepted as a, uh, money is a social co uh, social construction. So, but they don't they don't uh, prove it further. So I will try to explain it further. So, what it means that money must be accepted. So, Nakamoto. Uh, Nakamoto's basic idea was to create a system of electronic money uh, without a trusted third party. It is five times mentioned in the paper. 
the assumption is there is no third party which regulates transactions and takes responsibility for their correctness. So please note the relationship between trusted, trusted third party, responsibility, and regulation. For this to be achieved, he created idea, idea uh, blockchain of blockchain or the centralized ledger technology. So. Uh, it is kind of curiosity, of course, that Nakamoto in his paper didn't mention either blockchain or ledger. This is outcome of, of further interpretations uh, uh, interpretation of his intentions. So this technology, blockchain technology or DLT, uh, uh, relies on three basic principles. No central intermediation of transactions, no reversibility of transactions, and pseudo it is special kind of anonymity of users. I will explain it later. To the anonymity, DeFi, decentralized finance, is a recent attempt at main, uh, maintaining these principles. Uh, it is important to note that Nakamoto's goal was to create electronic cash, and I will now jump to legal definition of money. I will provide legal definition of money from the end of 19th century. It is formulated as description of cash transactions, paper notes and uh, transactions with paper notes and with coins at the time, at, uh, at the end of uh, uh, 19th century. The description consists of four important elements money that is cash coins passes freely from this is first from hand to hand throughout the community in final discharge of debt being accepted equally without a reference to the character or credit of the person who offers it and without the intention of the person who received it to consume it. This, in fact, uh, I would like to say that this definition uh, is a, a consequence of long development of, uh, of long thinking uh, uh, about money, and it is possible to find its roots even in Roman law. So. And now, uh, there is a parallelism between principles of a blockchain and the legal definition of money. So probably the most characteristic, uh, most important characteristic of money is that it represents the final discharge of debt. This is first, no reversibility of transactions or debt. Take, for example, payment by check or with some other financial instrument. This is not final discharge of debt because a bank can decline to accept the check. As for anonymity, this feature of cash comes from Roman law. And in this definition, without reference to the character or credit of the, uh, of the person who offers it. I will later explain a little bit more. So, there is no central register. It is first time uh, mentioned in, in this uh, presentation. There is no central register of uh, uh, cash transactions. Uh, if you buy something in a shop, there is no central register uh, that you uh, gave coins to uh, the seller. So, and. Uh, Bitcoin is not for consumption and coins and, and paper notes are not for consumption. So now uh, I will start with the bank money. I will explain bank money and its development. It is also uh, outcome of a long historical development. Today, uh, to, today payment with bank money represent final, final discharge of debt. It was not always the case. Neither payment with a bank deposit nor with bank note was 
uh, was considered final centuries ago. It was uh, like today, as I mentioned already, check or bill of payment, which can be rejected if there is no money in the account. Well, uh, for bank notes to become money, some preconditions had to be fulfilled. And uh, this pre precondition for Bitcoin, uh, I think uh, the same preconditions are uh, important for Bitcoin, Bitcoin to become money. So they had to be used on massive scale bank notes, for example. They had to be standardized. Some routines in their use had to be established. The interest of parties in, trans in transaction uh, had to be satisfied. And finally, I would stress that the responsibilities of parties in a transaction were allocated in such a way that the bank notes were considered to be a final discharge of debt. Not only bank notes, but de bank deposit if we use bank deposit as bank money. Only at the end of this process of standardization, routines, uh, massive uh, use on massive scale, law, European law or any other law, recognizes some payment as money payment, as final payment. So let, let me speak a little bit about responsibility, which is central central subject or central topic of, of my presentation. The finality of bank money payment was achieved uh, by a particular allocation of responsibility. Uh, it is necessary that the bank takes responsibility for the transaction from the payer, buyer, the one who pays. Uh, bank doesn't say, uh, okay, I will read it first from the payer, and uh, that the pay payee, seller, the one who receives money recognizes responsibility of the bank. So uh, what it means that bank takes responsibility for the transaction from the payer. If you uh, save some money in uh, the bank and you want to pay for something, bank can give you money and tell, okay, you pay for it. But if bank takes responsibility for the payment, bank will do it. Bank will transfer your money. Also, the one who receives money must res recognize responsibility of the bank. You know, that bank will uh, uh, do it. Bank will execute the transaction. So we can compare it with the, uh, with the payment service. In Croatia, it is postal service, post office, for example. And if you uh, order post, uh, payment service to pay, and if something happens, uh, the payee, seller, the one who receives money, will tell you, okay, solve your problem with the post office, but pay, uh, pay my money, you owe me some money. In the case of bank note, or in the case of uh, uh, paying with bank deposit, if client of bank, seller, the one who receives money, recognize responsibility of the, uh, of the uh, bank, this could become final payment. This could become money check, not financial instrument, and so on. So in, uh, this was, I think, my key, my key point. So in Nakamoto's words, the bank is a trusted third party. A bank is in, in, the, in the center of transaction. It takes responsibility for the transaction. It regulates the transaction. And in the end, bank can be regulated by the state. If bank takes responsibility, it can be regulated by the state. Nakamoto, uh, with uh, his idea, no trusted third party, no responsibility, try to avoid any regulation, bank and state regulation. So 
also people from the uh, DeFi, decentralized DeFi. Uh, sim uh, similarly, the finality of bank payments. Uh, so, uh, 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 in uh, we know that uh, recent development, uh, uh, anonymity uh, of uh, bank payment is uh, saved, is uh, provided with the privacy of the relationship between client and the bank. But of course, privacy is nowadays is under attacks from, uh, from the community, from the state, from the government and so on. So in the world of bank payments, uh, anonymity is not anymore so, so solid as early. So uh, this is one slide which explained that uh, uh, my approach uh, in this analysis, money is not described by its market functions, store of value, unit of account, means of payment, but by its institutional nature, not only legal characteristic, but by its institutional nature. For, inst for the institutional approach, cases of theft and similar misconduct are important for the for understanding money and uh, other financial instruments. I will now describe how the crypto world evolved step by step toward recognizing responsibility. In Nakamoto's world, there is no trust, there is no responsibility. I repeat it again. So, the crypto world is full of various forms of misconduct. Not only the crypto world, also the world of uh, official finances, of course. But now we speak about the crypto world. So uh, money laundering, price manipulation, insider trading, fraud, Ponzi schemes, hacking, phishing, ransomware, fake crypto exchanges, and so on. So for the purpose of this presentation, I will describe only three significant uh, large hacks. Mount Gox hack from 2014. DAO, uh, I read it DAO, uh, this is the Centralized uh, autonomous, autonomous Organization, DAO, hack from 2016. And this hack is for my presentation the most important. And CoinCheck hack from the beginning of 2018 after that uh, burst of the uh, ICO battle. It was, I think, in uh, January, February of 2018. So. At the time of hack, I speak uh, now about Mount Gox uh, hack. It, uh, it was the largest crypto exchange in the world. It was a Japanese crypto exchange. And Bitcoins worth 400 to 400 million dollars were stolen. Some say it depends on the exchange rate. Of course, some say only 200 million, million dollars, but I think doesn't matter for, for this presentation. DAO case, decentralized, uh, decentralized autonomous organization, is based on smart contract. And it wasn't first smart contract, of course. But uh, it was an uh, uh, ex exemplary smart contract, very important smart contract. At Ether, uh, worth $150 million of dollars were stolen. And uh, coin check exchange uh, at the uh, beginning of 2018, uh, $500 million of uh, third type of currency, name coins. We uh, can note here uh, in the first case, uh, Bitcoins were stolen. In the second case, Ether, Ethereum uh, were stolen. And in the third case, name coins were stolen. So the crypto world recognizes responsibility as a protection and pre prevention from fraud. Mt. Gox filed for bankruptcy. The exchange, owners of exchange were declared their responsibility. Two thousand later, 
ninety uh, percent of the network members voted for hard fork. They voted for. Uh, they cancelled suspicious uh, uh, transaction. So this is. I think uh, I should explain a little bit this case because. Nine, uh, uh, ten percent of network members voted against cancellation of transaction because this wasn't a hack in usual sense. We think about hack as somebody break the code and change the code and takes money. It was actually abuse of smart contract. People who uh, uh, took 150 million of dollars in it, they simply uh, implemented what was already in code. This is why, so code is low. This is why 10% why, uh, uh, of people said, well, this was already uh, in the code, and we stick with the with the code. We we keep with the code, and there is uh, this is why they call it hard fork, because ten percent of them now have at classic at realm classic, and ninety percent of them uh, uh, established I would say new branch of that that uh, uh, that kind. And in the third case, developers. So in the first uh, case, uh, owners, of, owners of exchange took responsibility. In the second case, network members took responsibility. And the, in the third, uh, third case, developers, coders of them, decided no hard fork. We will not cancel this, uh, this transaction, this suspicious transaction. We will follow. Uh, stolen coins. So, in this case, anonymity is useless because if you pay in a shop with a coin, nobody can follow uh, your coins. You know, so you already uh, left the shop and you are free. But if you uh, uh, took money, stolen coins in the in the case of NEM, so. Developers decided because every coin is traceable. Developers decided to follow your uh, uh, these coins, and the principle of pseudo anonymity is uh, transformed. I would say. I have now three slides which explains in detail these three cases, but I will skip them because I already explained uh, uh, what is. The most important, and I will now, I will now uh, summarize what I said. So all three cases involved central uh, centralized decision making, owners of exchange, members of network, and developers took over responsibility to decide whether a particular transactions to be a final discharge of debt. Uh, in the DAO principle, the non-reversibility of transactions was broken. In the coin, uh, uh, in the coin check, it is now obvious that the, the pseudo anonymity of users, anonymity and identifiability of crypto coins, is different from the anonymity of users of metal or paper cash. Users can be identified. I also want to stress that users of crypto finance don't oppose regulation, quite the contrary. According to an analysis of almost 2 million discussion posts related to users' uh, trust of Bitcoin from uh, uh, 2019, 63% of users believe that regulation can only make Bitcoin to be strong and trusted by many people. They consider Bitcoin as money or believe that Bitcoin can become money proper if it would be regulated. Excuse me. 
also business people from the crypto community are always excited if some crypto fund is formally recognized and legalized. So they also want regulation. So this is completely opposite to Nakamoto's intention to get rid of the trusted third party. Why this, uh, does this happen? What Nakamoto? Am I on time? Do I have enough? Just a few minutes? Yeah, yeah, you are in time, Jelko. I mean, okay. keep, keep going. You have all the time you want. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So uh, I will now speak what, uh, what did Nakamoto get wrong? Because this is the development is uh, uh, opposite to his initial intent. Uh, I will here mention only two of Nakamoto's misunderstandings. First, payment is wider than the transfer of cash. Payment only completes a deal. A deal assumes allocation of res responsibilities for the, just a moment, for the quality and the delivery of goods, for example, from side of seller and for uh, from side of buyer uh, uh, for payment of time, responsibility and so on. Therefore, therefore, it is not possible to avoid completely the problem of trust. Second failure, uh, I will, uh, I borrow this from uh, Kevin Baerbach, uh, code is not low. Law assumes unknown circumstances and the decision of a judge as to whether or not the law covers these circumstances, while code operate, uh, operates only with the data that are formatted in such a way to be included in the code. I will illustrate the problem with a recent case from the end of November and in the area of decentralized finance. Well, you remember that guy from the beginning of my presentation. He is in uh, decentralized finance. Decentralized finance is based on smart contracts. Smart contracts automatically, algorithmically execute uh, transactions. So what happens at the end of November at the time of the conference I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation alone? in the form of smart contract was liquidated following the information that the precondition for the cancellation was fulfilled. This has happened against the intention of sites in transaction. This is important. The information about fulfillment of conditions always comes outside of the smart contract blockchain. I will, uh, uh, this was loan, this was loan and the loan was canceled because of a uh, change of uh, collateral, the price of collateral. But I will illustrate, smart contract on prediction market could be, uh, could be constructed. Uh, for example, uh, uh, for, uh, if uh, people can guess, uh, which horse will win horse race. And people who uh, bid, who bid that white horse will win horse race. Automatically, if white horse win, really win, uh, 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 wins, uh, uh, automatically get money, which is put in that smart contract. But what if that information is wrong, because that information comes from outside of smart contract. Somebody can, uh, can hack that information and this in fact happened with that law. So it means that contract uh, cannot be, smart contract uh, uh, cannot be automatized. 
it shouldn't be a, a automatic type and transaction should be reversible and must be body which will uh, which will uh, confirm verify transaction and sometimes cancel it or reverse it so if basic principles were wrong the question is how does the crypto world survive and i will only only put some my thesis First, the crypto world evolves. I tried to explain it, to illustrate it. Second, crypto world, world uh, produce experimental crypto world. The crypto world is full of uh, uh, trial and errors and experiments, and it produce uh, uh, experimental products and organizations payments, exchange, stable coins, ICO for investments. Some better, some worse, you know, so not so good. Decentralized financing and so on. And also uh, in some jur jurisdictions, uh, crypto, world, uh, crypto coins are treated as non-material assets, financial instruments, goods, currency for example three years ago uh creation national bank declared that uh, crypto coins are goods and if somebody trade with uh, crypto coins uh, uh, he must pay uh, uh, vat because it is uh, trading with goods but in europe it is uh, yeah it, it is uh, generally accepted as money so and i think and this is my last sentence for this presentation. I hope I wasn't so tiring. So its future of crypto world depends on interaction between technology and people. Thank you for your attention. I have some further. Thank you. Of course, I, I'd like to discuss my thesis, my presentation, and also the future of Crypto world. Thank you, Jalso. Thank you. Um, a question can be asked by uh, by chat, obviously, and uh, Bruce will moderate the discussion, passing the question to you. Oh, I can see. Or you can see, yeah. The... Okay. Thank you, Jalso. Thank you, Stefano. Uh, some very thoughtful uh, moments there, actually. Um, it's now made me think. I think I need to go back to some of those sentences which you presented to, 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 to dig deeper into uh, the questions that have arisen in my mind. <laughs> um, I have one question from an anonymous attendee who is asking, with the new IP laws being introduced globally, what would the impact on the cryptocurrency, uh, what would be the impact on the cryptocurrency platform of these? Uh, I don't know which law uh, the anonymous attendee <laughs> uh, uh, means. Uh, so I I need more I need more information about uh, laws. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, internet uh, pla uh, platforms or uh, a protocol or IP address. Uh, what uh, what the question is, uh, is uh, asking with the new IP laws? Maybe the anonymous attendee is. Um, online and uh, would he list. or she care to uh, unmute maybe and I will okay intellectual property ah uh, intellectual so property. with a new intellectual property law sorry I was also um, I, I I was mistaking IP for IP addresses for the internet uh, IP address okay. me also yes. so. So with the new intellectual property laws being introduced globally, what would be the impact on the cryptocurrency platform? Well, cryptocurrency platform, uh, okay. Uh, uh, I think uh, basically this uh, 
question relates to the blockchain technology in my understanding because uh, a lot of hope is put in blockchain technology that uh, uh, blockchain technology can save intellectual property property in the digital world for example you can trace some song you cannot share anonymously now a lot of people li uh, listen songs uh, 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 watch movies and read scientific papers free of charge so uh, probably blockchain blockchain as a next generation of internet but i think we will wait decades for the, the blockchain to become next generation of internet internet can trace can trace uh, every transfer through the internet of intellectual property songs uh, scientific papers and you cannot read any more anonymously so and uh, uh, Anonymity was a part of my presentation earlier. Anonymity, and I think in the world of crypto uh, currencies, crypto assets, because this uh, uh, world works on uh, bl blockchain. I uh, showed in the case of uh, uh, coin check hack. They can trace coins. Every coin can be traced. And there are some coins, which are Monero coins, for example, which are fungible. So one coin is the same, uh, 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 usually, Ether, Bitcoin, Ripple, are, every Bitcoin is different, like every paper note. Uh, every paper note has a uh, number you know and every is different but you cannot trace it but bitcoin you can trace you can you you can follow it so uh, uh monero coin is anonymous in some sense tangible every monero uh, uh, you cannot uh, know which monero coin is uh, with you bruce or with uh, you uh, stefano and which one is with me so uh, as i said uh, people from the crypto community experiment they change there are uh, uh, 3000 cryptocurrencies uh, uh, at this moment with different protocols different uh, algorithms di different codes so if ip internet uh, uh, no internet, but uh, intellectual property became uh, uh, traceable, so you can trace it. Uh, uh, I think they will try to avoid it somehow. Maybe I answered because I don't know uh, actually what. Of course, they will be uh, they will be somehow forced to uh, declare their position, crypto crypto exchanges. But uh, I think crypto exchanges are uh, already uh, regulated, and European uh, uh, regulation, which I mentioned at the beginning, mostly are concerned with crypto exchanges. Thank you, thank you, Doctor Ivan. Uh, I have a question from Natasha Babit. Uh, there are two actually uh, related questions. Uh, the first one is, is a very interesting practical based question. Is there, a, is there a difference between a cryptocurrency and digital money or are they synonymous? No, no, it, that's different. Uh, of course, terminology is still not uh, accepted generally. And some people, uh, some people speak about virtual currencies. Some people speak about digital money. Some people speak about fintechs, alternative finance, and uh, uh, it is not defined uh, for. Uh, it is not uh, 
always very always very uh, easy to understand what they think if they say digital money but for example uh five seven years ago uh, facebook which now try to to promote libra which would be probably cryptocurrency uh, they uh, they had already digital currency crypto uh, 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 Facebook credits or Microsoft points or in a uh, game Second Life you have also uh, internal digital digital currency so and uh, uh, I think we should distinguish cryptocurrencies which is example Bitcoin uh cryptocurrencies work on blockchain technology actually the centralized ledger technology but we you can have without uh, uh without uh, in the digital world you can have also digital uh, currencies digital money i mentioned some of them and this is not crypto this is not crypto currency. Uh, how do you think cryptocurrency has influenced the trend of regulations leading to increasing transparency of financial institutions in terms of acceptance of decrease of privacy? Do you think people, Miroslav Erdely, may I read it? <laughs> so, uh, do you think people have become more comfortable with, uh, with lower privacy? No, I don't think so, but they will probably accept we live in a digital world and there is no uh, there is no in the digital world and uh, privacy is under attack not only from the world of crypto but uh, if you remember 10 years ago uh, zuckerberg he said forget privacy this is uh, the 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 concept from all times and not only zuckerberg but other gurus of new of the new world. So I think privacy is under attack in, in the new world, and also blockchain will not save uh, our privacy. Nakamoto's uh, idea was to save uh, somehow privacy, uh, also for for money laundering, but it was radical. It was radical uh, attempt. But uh, I don't think that uh, the, uh, the privacy will be saved, the, in the, easy saved in the development of the digital world. And if we speak about uh, European regulation, this year, uh, this year uh, uh, the European Commission launched that regulation of crypto. Year ago, they uh, uh, launched the GDPR regulation of privacy year uh, ago they they always have some big action in the world of, uh, in the digital world so big uh, big activity so i think privacy is under attack and other questions uh, yeah there is uh, another question from yeah natasha babich was a second question actually he was asking yes. about uh, in that respect can Mr. Ivankovic comment on the introduction of the digital currencies by the central banks? Yes, this is very interesting idea. Uh, this is kind of uh, oh, digital currency. Uh, it depends, would it be on blockchain or some other uh, technology, some different technology? Uh, this is very interesting idea. And I think the key moment of this idea is the problem, what would central banks in that case uh, uh, allocate what responsibility and what, uh, what kind of business will be allocated to uh, commercial banks? Because in that case, uh, you can have uh your account in the central bank you know 
what will uh, uh, commercial banks do with uh, in that world in the world of, uh, of uh, they will probably collect uh, they will probably provide loans but we'll see what will happen so yes this is interesting idea and i mentioned christine lagarde earlier i think she uh, her goal is uh, she is oriented towards central banks experiment with uh, digital currencies with uh, cryptocurrencies probably you can take over uh, from uh, commercial banks which are uh, uh, risky uh, take over uh, uh, personal and business account so this is basically idea for now i I would have a question, Jalko. Um, oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you no, very much. Uh, no, I was actually, yeah, I was trying to, I was going through through your reasoning, right? So, and um, based also on the type of um, experience I have, like in teaching finance, international finance, financial markets, and so on. So, uh, and normally the dominant view, um, even I was presented normally to students, but it's a kind of dominant view as well in the field is that, um, normally we take a different approach. We don't take the institutional approach, which is the one you adopted that one. So I was trying to go through in my mind because normally we take a functional approach to the function of money. Of normally that's what we do because obviously you start from the basics and you need to explain the function of money and so on. So, and I was thinking about if, if uh, we go through the reasoning, but we take a functional stance, a functional position, we would end up with the same type of conclusions as you have without taking, let's say, an institutional approach. I, I, I totally share with you like the idea and I, I kind of agree totally with you. Money, money is actually indeed a social construct um, as a form of kind of uh, emerging from the social kind of, kind of bargaining, accepting and so on. But at the moment we take into account, or you do you think actually that, for example, the, the crypto community in general, the cryptocurrency community and so on, does have uniquely or sees it uniquely as a functional and not as an institution. And that's the reason why in some sense um, is in some sense inclined in not having any type of regulation or thinking that can be self-regulated because, you know, like the idea is the argument normally put forward here is the same when uh, many, many years ago, um, as you know, like it was the same argument that was actually done in regular finance by the people doing basically over the counter, right? So over the counter contracts like derivatives, for example, and their claim was they don't need any regulation. Why do you need a regulation? It's a self-regulated because um, financial agents are actually rational. We know it's not true, but you know, behavior of finance showed up is completely different later on. But their argument was uniquely a functional type of argument and based on the rationality of the agents. Do you think that if you would take a different position there, like not an institutional one, which I, I agree is the one actually should be taken in finance, not just in the crypto currency, but in the overall finance world, it should be taken that one, not the functional one, which is the dominant one, a more a pragmatic one. Would you, would you have the same type of issue? Or, for example, Nakamoto had that idea when he created the, a functional one, a type of transactional one. Well, uh, this is very interesting, uh, really interesting questions. <laughs> this is not, not my polite answer, Mr. Uh, or thank you for that question. No, yes. no, 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 I understand it. No, I was trying to, to, I think, to think it through. Uh, 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 I remember, uh, that uh, uh, in my abstract of this presentation, mm -hmm. I mentioned that Kenneth Rogoff, mm -hmm. which is not, uh, uh, he doesn't uh, uh, follow finance from the institutional approach. So mm -hmm. he is from your camp, I, I would say, from the camp of traditional understanding of finance functional approach, as you said. He called it uh, 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 crypto, uh, cryptocurrency libertarian. What? So this is ideological uh, mm -hmm. 
explanation what it means libertarian so uh, uh, at the discussion uh, uh, this uh, it was discussion at the conference in Zagreb uh, at the end of November and one of proponents of crypto world I'm not against the crypto world as, as you can see uh, uh, from the end of my presentation I think it is very uh, interesting experiment there are very interesting experiments but I some uh, 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 I all only explain some shortcomings coming you know so this is uh, uh, actually this is the subject of my interest and I think it is very interesting that now we can discuss what is what is money actually mm -hmm. yeah speaking about crypto so i'm back to uh, kenneth Rogoff and uh, Rogoff and to that conference uh, conference uh one of uh one of uh, uh, the, uh, uh people from the cryptocurrency camp said we have in the decentralized finance smart contract and in that contract if something goes wrong, you can lose money, but you can, it is your risk. You cannot call, there is no phone number. You can call and ask what, what was going with my, with my money. So if we, I think this is that functional approach. Mm -hmm. yeah. And yes, and, but at the end of my presentation, Nevertheless, if you uh, look uh, at this world from functional or from institutional view, 63% of people, they don't know about our discussion, functional or, uh, uh, or institutional. 63% of people want to have phone number and call somebody if something goes wrong uh, if some if some uh, steal his money you understand what i uh, I, I do I, so, I do um so actually, i think this is the same the same point from both both sides so. mm -hmm. no but, no i actually i um i do so uh I, I as i said i share with you exactly the same view i don't have a functional view of money and finance as well i completely on the opposite side of an institutional view of it but oh, okay. that's normally <laughs> how that's normally how it's taught according to the textbooks right so that's not okay. how it's presented in most of the textbooks um no i actually share that and i share like the same idea as the need of regulation and strong regulation when it comes to this type of um this kind of let's say area of finance and so on i was just wondering if as I said, this libertarian view uh, kind of as proposed in that type of sense would kind of end up with a different calm. But you are saying that basically more than 60% do require any a sort of regulation. So it means that uh, even if you have a, a functional approach, you still want to have a regulation. So, Of course. So yeah. people, people ask, uh, ask for it. So, and uh, I mentioned in my ab uh, abstract uh, money and liability, yeah. uh, asset and liability. Asset, but I didn't, yeah. uh, but I didn't have uh, time to explain this because uh, there are two camps in understanding of money: metal camp and uh, debt camp. You know, so in understanding, in explanation, uh, the origins of money. And uh, there is a. I will come back here to uh at the end icos i didn't uh, uh, explain yeah. icos in initial coin offerings this is in fact a uh, 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 kind of banking money in a crypto world based on cryptocurrencies kind of so mm -hmm. uh, as you know you have in finance m0 yeah. m1 m2 this is i would say m1 or m2 doesn't matter so you uh, and uh, uh, this world develops somehow uh -huh. so uh, but i uh, uh, towards uh, because you cannot have uh, 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 banking money 
without responsibility and uh, uh, liability you know mm -hmm. and this world of crypto mm -hmm. of crypto uh, develops uh, towards uh, uh, creation of banking money this is first attempt maybe not very uh, very successful attempt icos and mm -hmm. uh, decentralized finance but you know so uh, it takes uh, for banking money it took uh, several centuries <laughs> so, yeah yeah uh, of course we are at the beginning and it is i think very interesting time very uh, very interesting experiment so this is why i because from the crypto you can look back at the history of money mm -hmm. what is difference between crypto and shells crypto and first coins in uh, ancient greek so i think from crypto we can learn a lot Crypto can teach us a lot. So this is my. Uh, this Thank is you. why I, I'm interested. In the, in the, mm -hmm. And we can speak about uh, several views, functional market yeah. view, and also institutional. Yeah. We can speak about ideologies. Also, everything across here in the crypto, mm -hmm. in the crypto world. So. Thank you. Thank you for. For Thank you for the question and the discussion. <laughs> and uh, if some any other... any other questions uh, because from the audience, we have uh, still about five minutes. Any other question for Jelko, who kindly is kind of willing to answer questions? So. I I hope my my idea at least was understandable and clear. Maybe too much understandable nobody nobody <laughs> want to oppose <laughs> i expected people from the crypto crypto world the enthusiasts they will oppose okay um okay. if there are no any more questions um i would like to thank you again for joining us this evening and uh, um talking to us about the cryptocurrency challenges. It has been a great pleasure to have you with us. Um, looking forward to have you again. Um, I hope. Yes, uh, will happen for sure. <laughs> and uh, maybe in person, so in a more normal type of setup. But um, thank you. It has been and like really a wonderful talk. And thank you so much. Thank you for inviting me. I hope and we will discuss uh, again at the, maybe next year. Uh, for sure, we will discuss. And uh, um, yeah, I would like to thank you on behalf of the college, the School of Business, and it's been a great pleasure. Thank you. I was excited. Thank you very much. Well, see you. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. much.